Is there a certain time or maybe a couple of times when you ought to use a white spinnerbait blade? Good morning, guys and girls. April 9, catch of the day. We're going to be looking at the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 29, 11. Foolish people lose their tempers. <laughs> God didn't need to tell us that, did he? We knew that, didn't we? Foolish pe people lose their tempers, but wise people control theirs. You know, Proverbs is a book where uh, there's a lot of contrast where something good happens if you think one way or do one thing, something bad happens the other way, where you're intelligent or smart if you do one thing and you're completely an idiot if you do the other. Now, we've all fallen into both categories many times, there's no doubt about it, but this one says that foolish people lose their tempers, but wise people control theirs. See what my uh, devotional is for that. Submerged stumps are pretty much always a great place to find a bass. The very best stumps will be the ones that you can just barely see down under the water. In other words, as you're fishing and looking, and you know, you see tournament fishermen, we stand up all the time. I stand up all the time anyway. I, 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 I'm going to be putting a, a front seat in my ranger boat and my tracker boat and try to set down a little bit more since I'm not fishing tournaments much, but it's really difficult for me not to stand up and fish because when you stand up, you can see down in the water so much better. Now, it's critical to wear a good pair of polarized sunglasses, one that really cuts that glare, good quality sunglasses that you can see down into the water because the very best stumps are the ones you can just barely see. They're just a little bit deeper, and mostly they get overlooked by other fishermen. Generally, the best technique is to bump the stump with the spinnerbait. Now, I like to use Jimmy Houston, Jimmy Houston Legend spinnerbaits, Jimmy Houston Legend spinnerbaits, because they really are difficult to hang up, almost impossible to hang up. And, uh, and this is a color that is very, very good right here, a white spinnerbait, because in most of the dingy water, and, and you know, if your water's clear, you can see a stump pretty far down without too much trouble, but, but the, the really best time when you catch these submerged stumps is when the water's pretty dirty or dingy, and you can see a stump that you can just barely, barely see, a white spinnerbait you can see better than any other color. Now, I'm not saying the fish necessarily can see it better, although they can see it really well, but I'm saying you can see it better, so you have more control over it. You want to fish that spinnerbait just where it just barely touches that stump, just barely bumps into it. Now, that's the same time that you want to use a white spinnerbait blade because your blade obviously is up on top of the spinnerbait. And with that blade on top of the spinnerbait, you're looking down in the waters, you bring it by, you see the stump, you see your spinnerbait, and where you can just barely see that blade. So that's a, the time that you want to use. Another time that I like to use it fishing for smallmouth. White blades for smallmouth seems to work really, really well. Now, we paint those blades. Uh, we don't make any Jimmy Houston Legend spinnerbaits with white blades. Hardly anybody does. It can be kind of a, a custom-made baits or a homemade made baits. You put white blades on them, but you can paint it. Uh, the Spike It Company that makes Dip and Die, they do make blade paint, so you can actually paint the blades on spinnerbaits white. Uh, you can buy them that way. You can buy them already painted. Bass Pro Shop's got them, and you can buy them that way and, and, and change your blades out, put the white blades on. Uh, your blades won't act the same. If you buy store-bought blades, they won't act the same as the blades that we put on Jimmy Houston spinnerbaits, but, but they'll work really, really well. All right, depth control and direction are finesse techniques that learn need to be learned. Depth control and direction. So as you move your spinnerbait down through the water, how deep you've got it, where you'll just barely bump that stump or just barely tick that stump, just barely miss it, and it's how you bring it by the stump. That's techniques that you need to learn how to do. You move, you, that direction you move by moving your rod tip around, moving it down, moving it up. Don't get in the habit of just throwing out there and winding it in, having your rod tip in the same position all the time. This is true with any bait that you fish. You wanna move your rod tip around and, and learn how to do that to control the direction and the depth of whatever bait you're fishing particularly if you're fishing a spinnerbait. God says it's wise to have another kind of depth control. That depth control is called self-control. The old trick of counting to 10 before you speak or react is still as good as gold. If we just pause a moment when we're offended or we get upset, we'll give God's spirit the chance to take control. 
so we can stay calm and cool. When you're saved, God puts his spirit right inside of you. He puts his spirit in your heart. And that spirit is a spirit of self-control. But we've got to let it operate. We've got to let it work. We've got to give them just a little bit. I've talked before on some of these uh, daily devotionals about just waiting a, a couple of seconds before you answer in a, just about any situation. We're talking about here counting to 10. And you can count, you know, like somebody from up in the north, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's probably okay. That's still okay. Or you can count like we do here in the south. 1, 2, Earnhardt, 4, five, six, so you get the idea. But if you will just pause a little bit, a couple of seconds, count to 10, count to five, just pause and do something to give yourself a chance to let that spirit that God's put in you take control and you won't get mad. You'll, you'll just won't react in a negative way. All right, our tip this week is buy good fishing line. The cheap stuff is a heartache waiting to happen. Y'all know I use High Seas Fishing Line. It's a very, very good line. And uh, it's it's line that's tough and it's strong. And that's what you want. Cheap fishing line is just what it is. Cheap fishing line. And, you know, we talk about a lot on YouTube that everybody's talking about PB, my PB, my PB, personal best bass. You don't want to trust your personal best bass to cheap fishing line. Hey, guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one today. I love you. <laughs>